All right, what are we doing now? Hindquarters. Um, I think the best way to start, right, we have the outside of the hindquarter here and the inside of the hindquarter, the ball joint hiding back here up to the shank. You're going to have one main line of kind of sinew that runs right in here. It's a little bit hard to see with this shell here. Let me see if I can take that off, make it a little easier to see, folks. There we go. So as we kind of explore, this line starts to really develop here. We're just going to follow that and not cut into any of our primals, but just open that line up until we get all the way down to the ball joint there. Okay, so we can start to see the femur down here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to keep all the hindquarter meat in one big piece, following those sinew lines between the main muscle groups. jump in here and recap so you're basically going right in right into the femur yeah following the lines between the major muscles yeah and this is a good kind of picture of where we're at here right we're down to the femur and I'm just working my way around both sides of it until all that meat comes off in one big piece and then we'll start working our way up into the shank here and really you can debone a hindquarter and keep all your meat in one piece there which is pretty slick. So let me get a good shot of that. Yeah, we're just gonna keep diving in here. So and I'll give you a little piece right here. We're working all the way around here, up to the shank. I've never worked backwards like this before. <laughs> <laughs> but as we can see here, it's just all coming right off the bone following the lines between the muscle and the bone here. Literally just taking that bone right out. Yeah. And when we do it like this, we don't risk cutting in to any of our primals, right? If we have a big, huge knife mark, we, you know, right in the middle of our top round, that might lose, you know, or might cut in half the size of eight of your steaks, right? And, you know, so you just have little medallions or something. Keep twisting this bone around and taking it all out. A nice one big chunk here. Here we go. The bone hind quarter. <clears throat> so I'm going to continue just to break these down into large primal pieces and. I think this could look kind of daunting for folks, like, oh my goodness, a huge slab of meat, what the heck do I do? Um, just start cutting gently um, among muscle seams, and I, it will naturally develop as it comes across here. So I'm going to start working in here between the muscle, not cutting any red meat, and booyah, here comes my little bottom round here, coming off in one big piece. Nice, so that's our bottom round. I'm gonna take this shank off so I have to quit messing around with it here.
boom, there's our shank. Or after we trim it up a little bit, a heel roast, H-E-E-L. We're just gonna work left to right here. This is gonna be our eye of round. And again, I'm really not cutting through any red meat to accomplish this, right? I mean, this is all one whole muscle group here. So bottom round, eye of round, heel. We're gonna dive into our sirloins and top round here. Yeah, I think this is a good example of just working along the muscle groups here, right? So we can see, I mean, we can even do it with our hands if we want. It's just start working them apart there. So I'll put in one little knife straight here, get the cap out. Nice, and there's our top round, kind of a big trapezoid, very unique shape. Pretty easy to identify. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna slice and dice this one. There we go. Okay, and these are gonna be our two pieces of sirloin here. So, <clears throat> and once we trim these up, it'll be a little easier to identify them. Um, a top sirloin is right, you go drive past like uh, Denny's, top sirloin steak, you know, 10 ounce, whatever. Now, um, that's this piece of meat. This will typically, at the grocery store, be cut into, you know, off of beef into a sirloin steak. Um, <clears throat> this is our tip sirloin. This is our top sirloin. Um, I think this makes great steaks. Typically with the beef, it'll be cut into a sirloin roast. Um, so kind of a bit of a difference there. This guy's gonna be a little more tender than this one, um, but I'm not gonna pass up the opportunity for eight pounds of steaks right there. Call me crazy. That's a lot of meat. I know it is. So we're just gonna keep breaking here and take some of these caps off. Nice. Um, we're gonna start with kind of um, the toughest piece of meats and go to the tenderest piece of meats here. So. I'm gonna leave the sirloins over here and we're gonna start with the heel. Um, so the heel is pretty much the shank, right? If we leave these bone in, we can do a full bone in shank. We can cut soup bones off of them, asabuco, a few different things like that. Um, your grinder at home will have a real tough time with these big pieces of sinew. So what I recommend folks do is spend a little time getting the big pieces of that dried cap out, right? Get down to some red meat here. That's gonna help your hamburger texture stay like nice and fluffy. You won't have any bits of hard meat in there. Nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the big pieces of sinew and throw them in kind of our trash pile here if you will um, our big meat grinder here this huge industrial one it'll eat up that stuff so quick and make it real tender uh, we double grind all of our hamburger uh, which means it just real comes out nice and tender um, you know we can see here and we'll come across a couple of these as we keep cutting see that little guy there that little gland I think when folks talk about gamey meat some of that has to do um, with not cutting all of those little guys out, those little glands, and then making it into the hamburger. Nice, so we have it pretty well trimmed up there. You know, if I really want to, quick here but essentially what we have here is a heel roast um, and don't let all that silver skin dissuade you if you cook it long enough and add enough moisture back in that crock pot or whatever you're cooking it on that will turn out silky smooth 
Um, cooked right, you can serve this to your mother-in-law and she'll like elk, so. <clears throat> so yeah, and that's kind of where we get into a little bit of, right, the teamwork of the hunter in the field, the butcher at the shop, and the cook, right? Kind of the, the triangle of success for wild game cutting there. So, but yeah, there's your little elk roast there, heel. Um, I'm gonna work with, these are pretty synonymous to me when it comes to tenderness and or marbling um, or lack thereof on wild game. We got our eye of round, right? We can see here long and slender. Um, they'll create nice little um, medallion sticks, look like an eye, very circular. It's a good thing to remember. Top round, kind of looks like a big trapezoid top trap. Um, this is our bottom round here. So all these guys, if we trim them up, I and mean, we can make some huge kind of Christmas dinner type roasts, um, or you know, cut them in half, create some smaller roasts, or after they're trimmed up, cut them into steaks across the grain, right? Grain, 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 cutting across in steaks. 